This is Adam Wandt. I am a professor and technologist at John Jay College of Criminal Justice at the City University of New York, and this is week two of my iPad Mini trial. During week two, we are going to look at how I use my iPad Mini to manage my files and my data. This is part of a four-week series. Last week, week one, we explored how to use the iPad as a cell phone to replace your iPhone. Next week, during week three, we're going to look at the iPad mini to examine how I communicate with the people in my life. Today, this is week two on data and files. During week two, the trial continues to go well. Um, I haven't dropped the iPad mini again. However, the cover does keep popping off. So let's go take a look at how I keep my data and files on the iPad mini. So my workflow for keeping my documents and data on my iPad mini is fairly straightforward. I have access to almost all of my documents and data um, from my iPad mini that I do from my standard computer or my laptops. I sync almost all of my files that are at least are not confidential uh, and we'll take a look to see how I do that on here. The first program I want to look at, um, which is one of the more important ones, is Data Vault. Data Vault is an important program that allows us to store encrypted information. One of the things you might want to store on your iPad or computer are your passwords and other personal information. And Data Vault is a good program that allows us to do that. Here you can see that I have sunk for my computer. Um, information for my eBay account and then I can go directly to Data Vault, get my eBay login credentials and use them on the computer directly. One of the really nice things I like about Data Vault is it allows for things other than just passwords such as bank accounts, credit cards, driver's licenses, insurance and so forth and so forth. It also allows me to keep my business and personal stuff separate. Data Vault is important because we all need a way to store encrypted information on our iPad or iPad mini and Data Vault is one of many password management programs that allow us to do that. Data Vault could back up to the cloud so if we lose our iPad we don't lose our passwords and it's accessible via the PC and all of those are important as well. I would say that anyone with an iOS device should consider syncing their passwords uh, to their iPad or iOS device but they should do so using an encrypted program such as Data Vault. The password protection that comes on the iPad simply is not strong enough. The second program that I use that's worth talking about um, is extremely important. It's Dropbox. Everybody should be using Dropbox. Dropbox is a cloud syncing and storage solution that allows me to keep all of my data safe, not only on my desktops and laptops, but backed up in the cloud. Dropbox also works to sync between my desktops and my laptops. Now all of that information that I have would take up too much space for my iPad mini. So what Dropbox allows me to do is only access the documents that I need when I need them and then it pulls them down from the cloud, updates them, and then uploads them back up. Dropbox is a method that I use to make sure that I have access to all of my files no matter where I am. Now, one of the critiques I always hear about the iPad is that there is no Microsoft Word. There is no Microsoft Excel. There is no Microsoft PowerPoint for iOS. However, honestly, you don't need them. For the level of manipulation that most people will do to a Word or Excel file, Docs2Go is the perfect program for that. Docs2Go is perfect because not only does it work with the iPad, um, but it also works with one of several different cloud syncing solutions. I have Dropbox, so using my Dropbox account, I could open any Word document in my Dropbox account, edit it on Docs2Go, and then re-upload it to the cloud. But it does not only just work with Dropbox. If you're a Google Docs, BoxNet, or SugarSync user, you could use Docs2Go to edit your documents as well. You could also use Docs2Go to create new documents, and you can create Word 2003, Word 2007, you could also create Excel or Numbers or PowerPoint slides. Um, so that's all really important to remember. The important things to remember about Documents to Go is it allows us to create and edit Word, Excel, and PowerPoint files right from our iOS devices. They also have one compatible with Android, and it does serve as a replacement for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint itself. So we don't need those Microsoft programs. So I'll use Doc2Go if I want to access something from my Dropbox account and change it in the field. 
Evernote is a really important program as well. Evernote is a program that for a small annual charge, you could upload all of your PDFs to Evernote and have them instantly available from any of your devices. What Evernote does is it makes a permanent record of your files. Um, and in my case, I use it to sync notes from meetings and PDFs. Whenever I get paperwork at work, I go right back to the office. I use my scanner. I scan the paperwork right into the Evernote and it becomes text searchable. So I could search any paperwork, any PDF right in Evernote just by using text or a keyword. I really think that Dropbox and Evernote are programs that everyone should take a look at. They are immensely important for me and the work that I do, and I get a lot of use out of both Dropbox and Evernote. The next program I want to bring up is Bento, which is by FileMaker. Bento is wonderful because Bento allows me to sync with my computer all of the databases that I keep on a regular basis. I keep databases or what they call libraries. I keep databases for my inventory, for my office. I keep certain notes all in Bento. And Bento's mobile application syncs with its desktop application to keep the information up to date. As of now, I don't believe they have a cloud syncing solution. I think I, I go back to my office and I sync via Wi-Fi. It would be wonderful if Bento included an ability to sync via Dropbox as well, which at this time it doesn't. So looking at my top five applications, Data Vault, Dropbox, Dops to Go, Evernote, and Bento, I am able to search, access, manipulate all of my data from almost all of my projects. The one exception, is data that I don't keep in the cloud because I consider it confidential and that is kept on a secure hard drive in a single point or location. So these five applications do almost everything that I need on a day-to-day -day basis. Below it, I have three other applications that I use regularly. One of them is Pocket. Pocket is a newer application. While I'm searching the web, if I find an article that I like, I will save it to my Pocket from a web bookmarklet. It's very close to Instant Paper or many other of the applications that preceded it. But I do like Pocket because it allows me to make a list of the websites that I want to go back and visit. Another app worth mentioning is Paper. Paper is a really fun drawing app and it allows me to sketch things on my iPad or iPad mini. It includes the ability to use different sketch notebooks. And once you open the sketch notebooks, they have a really interesting way of you scanning through them. Uh, when you want to make a new sketch or you want to create a, a new drawing, you have a, an array of tools including ink pens, pencils, pens, markers, and erasers. And you also have the ability to use several different colors as well. Um, I use paper on a regular basis for different projects, and I think it's a, a good program as well. The last program I use on a regular basis that I'll go over is iThoughts HD iThoughts HD is a mind mapping program. It allows you to map um, a family tree or map out your thoughts. In this case, I've blocked out a little bit um, from the screen, but this was my old home network design. This is how I used to have my home network. Uh, it's completely irrelevant at this point, um, which is why I'm showing it. I've re completely redone my home network, but I was able to design my home network right in this program. It basically allows you to create trees of information. So those are the programs that I use on a regular basis. I went over eight of them. There are several other programs that people use to manage their data and files that I did not go over, but I will mention because they're in widespread use. The first is iWork. Many people uh, like numbers, pages, and Keynote right on their iPads. I don't use them that often. However, I do have them loaded in case I need. Chances are, I don't use iCloud to sync my documents and data, um, which is probably why I don't use those programs. If I needed to use um, numbers, pages, or Keynote, I would just go right back and go to docs to go That's my preferable, um, that is definitely my preferable application. Another app that's worth mentioning is OmniFocus. OmniFocus is an incredible application for managing projects. It's a project and to-do list manager. It is fairly expensive, both the desktop and the iOS versions of it. I've experimented with them. I never really got into OmniFocus, but it is a great program to check out. iOS does come with reminders. Uh, I want to start to make more use of reminders. 
reminders being a to-do list that helps me get my daily tasks done. But I have not made, I have not really used reminders to its fullest, but I hope to do so soon. I'll quickly mention two other programs. The first one uh, is Remember the Milk, RTM. Remember the Milk is a cloud-based syncing to-do list application that people swear by. I used Remember the Milk for quite some time, and then I stopped using it. I've had problems using an electronic to-do list. I have not tr found something that really worked for me yet. I've tried OmniFocus. I've tried Remember the Milk. I've tried many different programs that are out there. I've tried just a standard text file. I'm going to start to try to use Reminders um, because it does sync so easily and see how that works going forward. But again, I've had problems with it. There's also the iOS program for Notes. However, I don't need to use the note program since I use Evernote for everything that most people would use notes for. So Evernote completely replaces notes for me. That is my week two review of the iPad mini. Join me back next week when we look at how I communicate with people in my lives using my iPad or iPad mini. Again, these podcasts are useful for all iOS devices, not just the iPad mini. This has been week two of the iPad mini trial. I've looked at documents and data. Next week on week three, we'll be examining how I communicate with people in my life using my iPad mini. My name is Adam Scott Want. I am a professor and technologist at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, which is part of the City University of New York, where I serve as chair and senior researcher with the CUNY Skunk Works Academic Technology Research and Development Group. Thank you for watching this podcast. Please subscribe and like this video to help support my work so that I can continue it.